Welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God Online. We're so glad you've joined us. Yes. And we're glad to come into your home, residence, or wherever you are located at the moment. We just want to share some encouraging things that God has given us. And this is the time that we've set a time for the 21 days for prayer. And during that time of prayer, uh, we're going to be talking about prayer a little bit here. I know that uh, my son, missionary Garrett Kenyon, spoke some last week about uh, literally waiting on God. And it was a fabulous sermon. If you didn't catch that, you need to go back and listen to that again. But I want to talk to you a little bit more today. I want to talk about prayer that raises the dead. We do a little bit on faith also at the same time because that plays an important part in prayer. Uh, we just can't just say a prayer and say, I hope that works. That's, that's not quite there. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. But in a few minutes, we're going to be sharing in communion. And if you haven't prepared to receive communion today, why don't you just take a moment and uh, get a cup and maybe some juice, and maybe a piece of bread or cracker or something that way. And get ready to share communion with us. So we'd love to participate together today. We're going to ask Pastor Brian and Pastor Andrea if they would come and lead us in worship. And uh, then we'll be back with you in just a moment.
know, we just celebrated Christmas, Jesus coming as a baby, but he knew the destiny would be the cross. He knew the purpose and he knew the plan of the Father for which he came. And here we are today to celebrate his death on the cross because it's nothing but the blood of Jesus that can make us free, cleanse us, make us whole, bring us healing. His work on the cross did those things and so much more. So if you have your wafer or cracker, this represents his body that was beaten and broken for you. No bones, but the body, the flesh, was beaten for you. Father, we thank you that you chose to do the will of your Father that sent you here. You chose to fulfill the plan and purpose so that we could be free we would not have to make animal sacrifices anymore and our sins would not just be covered but they would be cleansed and i thank you for that lord if someone taking this communion today needs healing whether it's physical mental emotional or spiritual that you would bring healing to them and they would believe you for it as they eat their wafer that represents your body. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Let us eat. Nothing but the blood. It took blood sacrifice for our sins to be forgiven and cleansed once and for all. And Jesus was the only spotless lamb that could do that for us. And as you have your juice, this is a representation of his blood that was shed for your salvation, for your deliverance, for your freedom from sin and its hold on you. Jesus, we thank you for your blood that you shed for us, for salvation, for deliverance, for not just a covering of our sin, but to be free and not to be held in bondage to it any longer. And we thank you for that freedom now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us drink. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh precious. Thank you, Jesus. Is a lightly or a ritual and I pray that you never think of it that way we want to pray for many people that we know are sick in body and, and having 
lingering effects and even other issues and we want to lift those needs to the throne room and maybe you you need a job or or some other issue i know we always pray for healing and some people probably think well why do we always keep doing that because the word says to pray the prayer of faith the word says to ask and believe and you will receive and so we are asking on behalf of those that have written in or sent emails or text or called we're coming to the throne room on behalf of those people and lifting their needs before the Lord father right now Lord it almost seems like that we I don't even want to say it. But Lord, right now, we're coming to you and to your throne to ask you for healing in the bodies of those that are struggling with COVID and, and after effects and, and Omicron and all of, and the flu now, Lord, and all of these things. Lord, bring healing to your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I just thank you that you will uh, eradicate this virus in their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Raise a standard against it and make them whole. And I thank you for victory. Lord, we know there are people that are struggling with cancer. We know there are people struggling with other physical ailments that God, I pray that you would just intervene there. The Lord, you would bring victory, those facing surgery, that you would be there in that room. You would guide the surgeon's hand, help him to see what he needs to see, Lord God. Let nothing be hidden from his eyesight, Lord, and that he would take care of everything he needs to take care of in those bodies for surgery, Lord. And that your presence would be in that surgical room when they would sense, or even the surgeons and nurses would sense there's someone there with them, Lord God. And just bring peace to that one that's facing surgery. Lord, peace to their mind, peace to their heart. Go before them and prepare the way. Lord, we know that you have the power that you could speak the word and surgery would not even be needed. So, Lord, we even ask you to even do that, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. For miracles, Lord, and bodies, we thank you. Lord, there are those that need a job or are struggling for, for a job. Lord, open up the door, I pray, the right door, that they'll be right there. And Lord, even have somebody call them about a job they heard about, Lord, and get help them to make that call right in time, Lord God. Make provision, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, there might be those that have decisions to make and they just are distraught and they just don't know what the right thing is to do. Lord, I pray that you would impress upon their mind and their heart the right way, Lord, the right path, the right direction to go, and that, Lord, you would go before them and prepare that way, and that they will know without a shadow of a doubt they've made that right decision. And I thank you for victory. Lord, we also lift up those that, um, those that are struggling in finances. Lord, they may have a job, but somehow the finances are just not enough. Lord, I pray that you would increase that level, Lord God, of, of income for them. And Lord, then give them wisdom. Maybe they're handling their finances wrong. Give them wisdom, I pray, to be better handlers of their finances, Lord. And I thank you for victory in the households for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, last week we had missionary, uh, our son, <laughs> missionary Garrett Kenyon with us. And uh, we would have loved to have his whole family on here, but that was a little difficult at the time. <laughs> timing and getting everybody coordinated to the right place 
powerful message you preached and yes. several of you sent in some uh, your missions a missions offering just for them and thank you for doing that yes. but today we also like to uh, receive our our tithes and our offering our gifts unto the lord mm -hmm. and, and if you would like to give there's a thing online there that you can give through or you'd like to mail it in we'll take it that right. way too there's a lot of various ways we've taken and received uh, your gifts unto the Lord. Uh, you can also drop it by the church. We've had right. people do that many, many times. We've had people do that, and that's wonderful also. Thank you so much yes. <clears throat> for your faithfulness. Yes, amen. For your faithfulness. We're just thrilled that you are faithful unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Today we're located in what was deemed as a prayer room, and I think that's interesting. Uh, stained glass windows behind us were taken out of, I think, the original church, and um, which is way, way back when this church was first founded. But it was founded on prayer. Prayer is a key factor in a lot of things in our lives that oftentimes we kind of take for granted a little bit, and we want to just command God or command this or command that. There's times that, that we need to understand some perspective of what Literally, Jesus taught those around him, not just his disciples, taught those around him how to do it. And I want to take this from a, a very familiar passage. I've preached on it several times before, but maybe a little different viewpoint today. And that is John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 44. It says, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This was the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, and get these words, what he says here. Uh, he says this, <laughs> and, and I love it. He says, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it has happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will be receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to the disciples, let's go back to Judea. Now, one of the things that, I, it's not even in my notes here, but I was thinking about earlier today was the fact that uh, he delays this by two days. And when he delays it by two days, he's doing that for purpose there. He's, he's doing it so he can be, have a teaching moment. He's doing it so he can work with his disciples. He's doing it so they can kind of follow along with what God wants the, them to do and what needs to happen in their lives. So finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going to go there again? And Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. <laughs> During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there's a danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. And it's just this whole thought is totally, uh, I think, ab abstract abstract from where they're even beginning to think at that moment. They don't have a clue on this whole thing. <laughs> they really just don't even begin to understand this. They, they just don't even begin to put it together whatsoever. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleep, sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. Now, the perspective here is incredible. This whole thought on sleeping and non-sleeping is one of those biblical things that oftentimes we hear that uh, things are, this person's going to sleep or they're going to sleep or whatever. And God's perspective on that whole thing is different from us. Mm -hmm. You know, our thing, of, the disciples are thinking, well, if he's sleeping, he's going to get better because he's going to get more strength and he's going to wear off whatever's going on with him and he's going to be okay. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not quite the sleeping I'm talking about. There's a little bit more depth to this, a little bit more understanding. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll get better soon. So they told 
So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I mean, you can't say any plainer than that. And for your sakes, they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. Well, they're really getting confused here. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. In other words, he's using this as a teaching moment to help their faith to begin to increase. The belief part is part of that faith. The belief part is believing that God can do this impossible thing Amen. that you see before yes. you. It's not just saying, well, I hope so, I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. You know, I've, I've prayed for a lot of people over my lifetime, and as I've prayed for people, some people will walk away from their, well, that was good. I, I hope it works and because I'm going to see the doctor this week. And we'll see what the doctor really says about this whole thing. Well, first of all, you've just pushed God totally out of the picture. I believe in doctors. Totally believe in doctors. I go to doctors. But also at the same time, our trust has to be in God. If you're asking God for something, then don't say your trust is totally in the doctors. You know, right. let's, let's put the whole piece together here. Mm -hmm. Let's really put it together. And the story goes on to say... Uh, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to and die with Jesus. <laughs> Man, that guy is just really out there someplace, you know. Uh, but that's okay. We'll leave him out there. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already, already been in his grave for four days. And Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to console Mar Mary and Martha in her loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming... She, she went to meet him. Now, there's the, the part of consoling. There was also paid mourners mm -hmm. that time who would come out and begin to, to be there just to help mourn and help grieve because if people are mourning, it's easier to mourn. Mm -hmm. You know, if people aren't mourning, it's harder to mourn. When Martha got the word that Jesus was coming, okay, she goes out to meet him. Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. Period. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. She's got that little bit of faith going on there. A little bit of faith going on. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at that last day. And she's not quite getting this. She's believing to a point, but not totally getting this. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection of life. Anyone who believes in me, even after dying, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she said. I have always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come to the world. And then she returned to Mary. And she called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and he wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to, to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house, consoling Mary, saw her leave so hastily, they assumed that she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger, now listen to this, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him, he asked. And they told him, Lord, come see. Then Jesus wept. Now that's uh, probably the, the shortest scripture verse that has been most debated <laughs> over and over again. Because oftentimes when people read that, they're saying he's weeping over mm -hmm. somebody he's lost as a friend. That's not what he's weeping over. If you read what just took place, Jesus was deeply troubled. Why was he deeply troubled? He was deeply troubled because of their reaction how they were proceeding, what their mental thought was going on there. He was deeply troubled about all of that. Uh, the people who were standing nearby said, see how much you loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? And Jesus was still angry. Okay, that's the key right there. He's still angry. As he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across the entrance. Those caves are little tiny short things is what they are. You had to go down to get inside of them. And the stones were not that big. Uh, Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested. Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. 
And Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you would believe? Mm. This faith part kicking in there again. Right. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. So they rode the stone aside, and then Jesus looked up to heaven. This is the key ingredient to this whole thing. We think the most key ingredient to this whole thing is when Jesus shouts out, Lazarus, come out, or come forth. We think that's the key ingredient. But listen, it starts here. Sometimes we just want to shout and say, this is what needs to take place. This is what needs to take place. But there's more to it than that. Because Jesus is taking this moment, a teaching moment, literally to help his disciples understand this whole thing. Father, thank you for hearing me, is how he begins. Mm -hmm. Whoa, when was the last time you began your prayer? <laughs> Father, thank you for hearing me. God, thank you for hearing me. Mm. God, thank you for hearing my prayer, mm. and thank you for, for listening to me. You always hear me. But I, I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here, so that they will believe you sent me. Mm. Do you ever wonder why we pray out loud sometimes? Mm. It's to build faith in other people. Right. Build faith in other people. And then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And, you know, and let's, let's break this down a little bit. Lazarus comes forth and the grave claws are on and all that stuff. But there are several thoughts that I have here real quick I want to give you. Number one, God always has a different perspective than we do. Yes. Mm. God always has a different perspective than we do. He always has a different way of looking at it. I love that. Mm. Just love that. You know, when Jesus was getting angry, when he's getting frustrated with these guys, and he's, oh, where are they going to on this? And he, he's talking about, you know, he's just asleep, and it's just this, this, and, 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 and literally that, that thought on the sleep, I believe, is this, this is just temporary. Mm. A very short, temporary thing. He's just asleep right, right now. Right. It's just temporary. Our perspective looks at the situation as, it's history, it's done, it's finished. It's like a ball game. We look at the score up there, okay, it's finished. I mean, we've got 30 seconds to go on the clock and there's no way they're gonna get another 30 points in here. That's not gonna happen. Mm. And that's the kind of the way we look at God sometimes. Right. We go, God, this is history, it's done. Our perspective looks at it as history done. Can't change it now. And God looks at it as he's only asleep. He's only asleep. Jesus was angered and frustrated by their lack of faith, the lack of understanding, the lack of trust. They literally weren't hearing God. They weren't understanding what God was saying. No matter how many different ways he tried to say it and how he tried to work with them, they didn't get it. How many times do we not get God? How many times do we not understand what God is trying to do in this situation? Some of us are looking at, at the, the COVID all around us and all the other situations. We go, oh, well, dear, what's going on? You know, we're so lost in the COVID that we can't see what God really is doing right this moment. Amen. And we can't see what God wants to do in spite of all that stuff going on around us. We look at the government and say, the government needs to react this way. The government needs to do that. And we need to, we need to tell the government what to do. Well, God's trying to tell us, will you trust me in my perspective? And how I'm looking at this, because God's got a plan on all this stuff around us. And he's getting frustrated at us because of our lack of understanding, and at the lack of trust. And they literally weren't hearing God. They weren't hearing what, what Jesus was trying to say. And he wept tears of frustration. Tears of frustration, not tears of losing someone. Remember, he told them that Lazarus is only asleep. So he's looking forward to seeing Lazarus pretty quick. We're going to wake him up. <laughs> We're going to wake them up. That's what's going to happen. But they didn't get that. Right. They didn't think he was going to wake them up. And it's literally this, this prayer that raised the dead. And I would, if I'm praying for somebody to be raised from the dead, I think I'm going to use some other words rather than, thank you, God, for hearing me. <laughs> what? What? Jesus is using this moment again to teach. Right. Thank you, God, for hearing me. Mm. Second part of that is, you always hear me. That's an adoration to God. God, yeah. I know you always hear me. Amen. You always hear my prayers. You always listen to me. God, I thank you for listening to me. And then Jesus begins to, I'm, I'm praying out loud so that others will hear. So that we can build the faith of others yes. around us. I've heard people pray all sorts of different ways. I've heard people pray so they can, they can give... Um, 
uh, literally a flash media effect mm -hmm. so that everybody will know the news of everything going on around. <laughs> that has nothing to do with prayer. That means you're just using that moment to, to give an announcement. Mm -hmm. That's all you're doing is give an announcement. And that's not what this is all about. That's not what prayer is supposed to be all about. It's not a time for you to announce, to inform people. Prayer is not for you to inform other people of situations around the world. That's not what it's about. Prayer is literally, he's praying out loud so others will hear them, so that faith will build. Amen. Faith will build. Your prayers encourage and teach others to trust in God. Faith always plays a part in that. It's this building up and building up that God will do something greater inside of you or inside of that situation. He'll change it, turn it around and rearrange it all the way through. That's what it's about. The shout for Lazarus come forth. Well, Jesus didn't start with this. He could have. He could have. But he didn't because he knew that, first of all, he needed to recognize the Father. Do you remember back when he, when he taught his disciples to pray? What did he say to them? When you pray, pray like this. And he starts off with, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He starts with that. So what is Jesus doing here? He's, he's literally going back to that moment he's already taught his disciples and saying, Okay, you need to honor the Father first. Thank God. For hearing me you always hear me i adore your name i glorify your name he may not be saying our yes. father he may be saying it in a different way there's a lot of different ways we can say it but that's what begins to take place jesus didn't start with the problem he started with the father mm -hmm. he didn't start with the problem of the situation and go oh lord well, this is so bad, and, and Lord, you know, if you would put some other people into office, it would be different, or Lord, if you would change this around, or Lord, if you know, you'd set the pastor by a few days earlier, we'd been okay. Well, it's not about that at all. Jesus started with faith, to build the faith of those around them and teach them how to trust in God, how to adore the Father, how to literally go back to the place where he'd already taught them how to pray and literally move that into a live situation and use that to help them grow. Jesus told them Lazarus was only asleep. I love that. <laughs> Lazarus is only asleep. Only asleep. Well, he's dead. You know, you can get that, guys. Well, I'm just telling you right now, he's dead. But he's only asleep. See, in God's world, in God's perspective, right. and, and, the, and the unseen world that we don't even understand, yes. and this, this whole spiritual realm, as far as Jesus was concerned, well, he's only sleeping right now. It's not finished. Mm -hmm. It's not over. It's not, it's not completed yet. He's just asleep right now. In our world, we're looking at it going like, yeah, but he stinketh by this point in time. <laughs> and, and in God's world, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. Jesus could have gone straight to Lazarus, but the bigger problem was their faith. That's right. It was harder to increase their faith. It was harder to teach yes. them. Yeah. It was harder to work with them. He wept over it. He was disgusted. He was frustrated with them. He was going through all those emotions right. because they weren't getting it. And he knew that that was harder to deal with all that stuff rather than just raise Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was the easy part. <laughs> that was the easy part. Sometimes working with people and encouraging their faith, that's the hard part. That is the very hard part. Lazarus coming forth only took place after communication with God. It wasn't just a shout. It was communication with God, adoring the Father, yes. honoring the Father, our Father mm -hmm. who art in heaven. Mm -hmm. God, you are so wonderful. Amen. God, I know you hear my yes. prayers. God, I know that you're here. God, I know that you're reaching out. God, I know that you're doing those great things. God, I know that that's how you are. That's the faith, and that's the, that's the building of that faith, and that's the encouragement, and that's the belief going on there. And it's beginning to raise to a whole other level, in a whole other realm, in a whole other atmosphere that we can't even begin to explain. That's the incredible part. And that's the prayer. That's the prayer that raises the dead. That's the prayer 
that raises the dead. It's not just saying Lazarus come forth. That was the easy part. <laughs> that was the easy part. The hard part was getting through the weeping and, and the frustration of all the disciples and all their craziness that they were going on with. And couldn't, couldn't you have kept Lazarus alive? Just, to, you know, couldn't you have come a little sooner, Lord? And couldn't you have done this? And couldn't you have done that? And couldn't you, couldn't you do it this way, Lord? And sometimes we go so lost on what God could have done in our perspective instead of looking at God's perspective and saying, God, what are you trying to do here? Yes. How are you going to change this around? And how are you going to use this for your glory? And how are you going to be glorified through all this situation? What are you going to do, Lord? Yes. That's the key. That's the key. God wants to do some great things in your life. He wants to build some faith inside of you a little bit. He wants to build some of that inside of you that you'll begin to trust in Him. He wants to build some of that inside of you that you'll really put your total hope and, and total trust in Him. That's what he wants to do. <clears throat> Simple as that. That's what he wants to do. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to guide you. But he's teaching you as you go along. Sometimes when you say, Lord, I'm not sure I want to go through all this teaching. You say, you know, Pastor, I'm sick right now. Or Pastor, I'm going through this struggle right now. Pastor, my job is not turning out the way it should. Or Pastor this or Pastor that. Find out what God's perspective is on this whole thing. And we do that by saying, God, you hear me. Every time I talk to you, God, you hear me. You hear me, God. You always hear me. Yes. You always hear me, God. There hasn't been a time when you don't hear me. God, I may not understand all your perspective of what you're doing in this thing. But God, I'm trusting in you that you have this. You totally have this. My friend... I don't know where you're at in relationship with God today. Maybe you don't know God very well and you'd like to have him come into your life. It's very simple. It's, it's turning things over to him and saying, God, I just want you in my life and I want you to take control of my life and I want you to forgive me of all my sins and, and cleanse me inside and, and I want to follow after you. I want to make you Lord of my life. Simple as that. Make you Lord of my life. Simply say this, Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. For all the things I've done wrong. For all the things I've done wrong. I want to trust in you. I want to trust in you. I want to learn of you. I want to learn of you. I want your perspective. I want your perspective. Not mine. Not mine. I want to have that faith increase inside of me. I want to have that faith increase inside of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For coming into my life. For coming into my life. Amen. Amen. Now begin to trust in Him. Yes. Trust in Him. And say, God, you got this. You got this. Thank you, God, for hearing me. Yes. Thank you, God, for hearing yes. me. You always hear me, God. Today, on, on January 9th, God, you always hear me. And I thank you for doing that. Lord, I just thank you for increasing the faith of others around me, even as I pray out loud, just to increase their faith. Help me to do that. In Jesus' name. My friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Let us peace come over your household in such an incredible way. God bless you.